Welcome to part two of making this cute little jellyfish in Blender 2.93. Now, if you haven't already seen part one where we do the modeling and setting up the cloth simulation and all that sort of stuff, you can go watch that. And then you can come back here to part two where we're gonna be doing the lighting and the materials and then just rendering this out as a final animation. Like I said, I'm keeping things super basic and very beginner friendly, and I will be making these blend files available on my Patreon, which you can also check in the description below. So without wasting any more time, let's get started with part two. So obviously before we get into the materials, we need to set up some lights. So we're gonna go Shift A. And we're gonna go to our light options, add in an area light. And we're gonna go G, Z, move it up like so. And we're gonna go to our light settings and let's give it the power something like 120. And let's increase the size to about two, two meters, two to three meters. Go to your right orthographic view, move the light forward and then rotate it in. Shift D to duplicate the light, bring it down and then R to rotate it up. And then go to your front view, Shift D to duplicate, bring it over to the side. R to rotate and then duplicate it one more time and then rotate one in like so. If you now go into camera view and you hit Z and you go rendered, you can now go over to your render settings, enable ambient occlusion and also screen space reflections. So this looks pretty cool, but if you wanted some rim lighting, which we can add in a little bit later, that would also help. So let's just select the actual jellyfish itself. Let's go over to our shading workspace, go into your camera view Make sure you're in render mode. So we're now in our shading workspace and we're gonna work with this jellyfish material. So we're just gonna make it a nice bluish kind of green. And we're gonna leave the roughness as it is. In fact, we're gonna leave everything as it is pretty much. We're just changing the color on that one. We're then gonna to go to our materials tab, select the eye material. And we're just gonna make that simply a black color and then bring that roughness down to make it a bit more glossy. We're now gonna select the mouth object here and just simply make that a reddish pink and leave it as it is. That's all it is. We're now gonna add in a nice background. So we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna add in a plane. We're gonna go RX90, hit enter, and then S to scale it up, like so. We're then gonna go G, Y, and we're gonna move it back. And then go into camera view again. Just make sure it's filling up the whole backspace. Tab into edit mode and then hover over one of the corners or edges. Control R, you're gonna see a yellow line appearing. Then roll your middle mouse button like so. And once you've added in those cuts, you can go Control B to bevel them. Then click and um, in fact, I should have been in the proper selection mode, but just make sure you have these new faces selected and you're simply just going to go E to extrude them backwards. And then we're going to go and make our transform pivot individual origins. Then we're going to go S, Z, and we're going to scale them down on the Z. Then we're going to select everything, and we're going to go Control B, and we're just going to bevel it all. Like so. Then let's set the transform pivot back to median point. Tab out. Go to object mode and enable shade smooth. We're then gonna give, go to our materials, give it a new material. Let's call it BG for background. And over here, we're just gonna make it a nice reddish kind of material. Go into your camera view, hit Z, make sure you're in rendered. And you should have something that looks like this. You can make sure it's nice and saturated, doesn't really matter. But just bring that roughness down just a little bit to give it some reflection. And that's it, that's a nice little background. And what you can do is you can select your camera you can go over to your camera settings and then enable depth of field. And you can go shift A, add in an empty, scale down the empty and then go G, Y, move it to the front of your subject here. Holding and shift select the character and then go control P and then go object, keep transform. So now the empty is parented to the, the subject here. We can go and select our camera again and under the depth of field, just come down to the drop down, click on the eyedropper and then select that empty. Now we can come here to the F stop and drag it down gradually till we get this nice soft focus in the background. In fact, if you can see if we disable it and we enable it, it makes quite a big difference. So now we have that as well. 
So now if we play our animation, you can see this is what we have. But one more thing we can do that's really cool is we can actually go to frame one, select our camera, go to our constraints, and we're going to add a constraint up here. We're going to get a track, a damped track. Click on the little eyedropper and then select that empty as well. And then come make this negative Z. So now our camera is also going to follow our character. All we have to do is select the background and scale it up till it's not um, showing any of the world background. So you can see over there it went out a little bit, so I'm just going to scale it up a bit more. Maybe just scale on the X. So just something like that. Looks pretty cool. And if you wanted to, you can select your camera. You can go over to your camera settings. And you can go over to the viewport display. And you can come here to this pass part out. And you can just increase it just till it kind of makes the outside a little bit darker. So all you're focusing on is the actual little animation. So there's a few more things you could do, like adding in some nice rim lights. So the way you do that is you go Shift A, just go to your lights, add in some point lights and just move them behind the subject. Increase their radius under the light settings and their power. Then in your camera view, you can just move them and you can go Shift D and just duplicate them all along the outside of your subject, that little jellyfish creature here. And that's just gonna give it some nice rim lighting on the outside, just makes it pop from the background a little bit. So that's how we do that. Another thing you can do is you can go to your render settings and you can also enable motion blur. So when you render this, you can see some motion blur, but for me personally, it's not worth it for an animation like this and it doesn't really make that much of a big difference. So this is how I made this animation. So you can also grab the little jellyfish creature and you can also just go to your physics and just give it a collision. Go to frame one, hit the spacebar, and that's gonna also make that cloth actually interact with the jellyfish. It doesn't just go through it, which kind of breaks the realism a little bit. So um, now that we have this done, before we can actually render this out as a final animation, we have to cache the cloth. So select the tentacles, go over to your physics, and you have to now go over to the cache down here. And because we have 180 frames here to work with, we need to make the end value here 180. Make sure to save the blend file and then we're going to click bake. And now it's essentially baking in that cloth physics into the blend file, which you should have saved by now. And now it'll be rendering in our final animation and you don't have to keep struggling with rerunning this simulation. It's all baked in. If you do make any changes to it, make sure to always delete the bake and rebake. But that's all nicely set up now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to render and render the animation, but we just have to set up a few things quickly. So let's just quickly go to our output. Just simply go here to the output folder, click on it. I'm gonna select my desktop. I'm gonna make the file format FFmpeg video. I'm gonna to go to my encoding and under the container here, I'm gonna make that MV4. I'm gonna save it one more time. Then I'm gonna go render and render the animation. So here we go, we have the final rendered out animation. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little tutorial and it's something you can use, improve upon, and by all means, I didn't cover everything that could be said and I kept it way more basic than it probably should have been, but it's for what effort you put into it and the simplicity of it, it's just this quirky, cute little animation. So uh, have fun with it anyway, and if you're interested, you can check in the description below. I will be making these blend files available on my Patreon. Uh, but don't feel pressured to do that. It's just something I do put down there. So um, check out some other stuff as well. And stay safe, guys.